this is Nitro here today, giving you guys a Dark Magician deck profile straight out of uh, Legendary Dragon decks. Um, I'm still learning the deck, but uh, I just want to give you guys a day one uh, update of uh, how I would play. So first off, three Dark Magician, three Magician of Dark Illusion, and one uh, player named Oracle Mahat for your level sevens. Um, so obviously, uh, some people like to play two, but I, I like to keep him at three because we are playing Desires in this build. Uh, he's a three of just because of how good he is with Circle, and it's kind of like a staple. Him, he's just a personal choice just because I really just uh, like the first anime, so uh, yeah. Next we have two Apprentice Illusion. Um, you could play three, but she's amazing at two just because um, I think she, she could kind of break a three because you don't always need to search your Dark Condition. But she is also a good combo starter, you know, so, you, you know, you want to see her some of the time, but, you know, not all the time. Uh, next, we have our best searcher in the deck, uh, Magician's Rod. Normal, search any um, Dark Magician uh, Spoiler Shop card. But at the same time, you know, you can't search the Eye to Mice, which is pretty sad, because the new fusion is pretty lit. But um, he brings himself back, so uh, he's, he, he's just okay. Uh, next, we have uh, One Night in Sorcerer. Um, you use him for uh, navigation, so when you navigation into your Dark Magician, you special summon him. Um, you could just play DD Curl, honestly, but um, he's just something that could just be something your opponent doesn't expect. So, you know, when you summon him, you banish two cards from your opponent's graveyard, and, you know, next turn you Synchro Summon, and you go into a uh, level 9 Synchro that I'm going to go into later. One Rogue, um, I don't really like his effect just because you have to discard a spell chop card to summon a Dark Magician from the deck. But at the same time, um, he does special him some back from, from the grave and he activates a spell chop card uh, during your opponent's turn. So uh, it's really solid as one of, and you can honestly take it out, but um, I think it's cool. Um, a, a cool card in general. One Kaiku. Um, I've seen a lot of Dark Magician builds play this. Um, I don't entirely understand why. I mean, I guess uh, banishing cards from uh, from your opponent's graveyard is always a good thing, but that is actually why I play Knight and Sorcerer, or as I said, you can play DD Crow. But at the same time, he is a spellcaster, and so there's a few cards in this deck that do actually require you to tribute spellcaster, so it could be uh, a good reason to keep him in the deck. And next, we just have our hand traps. So two Ghost Ogres, an Ash Blossom, and a Maxi. Uh, the rest of it is kind of in the side deck, but uh, for the main deck, you kind of just don't really need um, anything else unless you feel like maining uh, your cherries. Um, if you feel like you're going to play a lot of decks that um, that rely a lot on their extra deck, you can main your cherries, um, you know, for, for that tournament. But, uh, like, in general, I don't feel like you need to main cherries. Um, although, you do have a lot of space in your extra deck. This is still at least seven slots in your extra deck where you don't really uh, need to use. So these would be your cherry targets. Seven cards for your cherry targets. So, yeah. Um, moving on to spells. We got our triple circle. Unfortunately, they don't match. Uh, you can get a third secret, but uh, yeah, it's circle is like your main uh, removal engine, and it's just a real solid card. You won't always get the first effect off, but you know, being able to manipulate the top three into your uh, your benefit is always a good thing. Next, we have triple pot desires. You know, um, we're just going all out with this deck. You, you, you like if you desires once and. Uh, you know, like, you just need to get draw advantage. I don't really like Spellbook and Knowledge because it takes up too many slots in the main deck, um, in my personal opinion. And, um, playing Allure Darkness, you don't really want to banish any of your, uh, pieces. So I think Pot of Desires, although, you know, ironically, you're still banishing some of your pieces, but, like, um, you're, you're getting a plus one off of it. So, um, you know, you do search a lot, so it's not a big deal. I optimize to go into the big new fusion or into Dark Paladin. You don't really need to care too much about, um, like, getting this because it's just an okay card. Like, this card isn't anything special, but it does help protect, um, like, make your deck a little more helpful. So, we got uh, Dark Hole. Uh, magical Dimension and Dark Magic Attack for removal. So Dark Hole just, you know, I'm sure you all you guys already know. So the reason why you play Magical Dimension is because uh, with Circle, when you tribute your Spellcaster monster, you would, um, you know, you don't even have to tribute your Spellcaster monster. You can control a Spellcaster monster 
and uh, you can tribute any monster you control. Special summon a spellcaster monster from your hand. The one you would summon, you know, is obviously someone who is named Dark Magician, so either Magician of Dark Illusion or Dark Magician himself. Pop a card in your opponent's field, and the Magical Circle would banish another card in their field. So, you know, you kind of get like two for one if you activate Dimension during your opponent's turn, or like even in general. And, you know, Dark Magic Attack, you can search it with Eternal Soul, and it's a Harpy's Fetter Duster for the deck. And, uh, illusion magic just to search your uh, dark magicians. So two navigation. I don't really like it at three because I never actually use it too often. Um, although again, um, I usually do go into knight and sorcerer when uh, I summon it just to banish cards. But if you don't feel like doing that, you can always just go into mission of dark illusion if you feel like making a rank seven. Um, other than that, uh, you probably go kaiku if you just want to have some offense on board. But I, I feel like uh, the options are kind of limited. But the Banish effect from Grave is definitely very useful. So um, if you just drop it with Magician's Rogue, it's not a bad choice in that regard. So Triple Eternal Soul, um, you know, it revives Dark Magician from your uh, hit, uh, from your hand to Grave, so your special from your hand to Grave. It's unaffected by all your opponent's card effects, and so because of that, you know, every Dark Magician is untouchable, including the Fusion himself, because he counts as Dark Magician on the field, so he would be unaffected by your opponent's card effects. So they can't um, bottomless him on summon, they can't do anything to him on summon, because he's summoned by the Eye of Tamaya, so they can't Psalm Strike him either. So him with Eternal Soul is a real broken combo, because his effect is that they can't target or destroy Eternal Soul with card effects, so they would have to remove it with something like Ignister, which is very niche, and because of that, you are playing your triple Psalm Strikes and your warnings just to make sure. Um, even if you know you can't get to your monsters as quick as you can or as quick as you want to, your opponent wouldn't be able to play the game. <laughs> That's the main reason you run that. And lastly, just one Storming, because you know, uh, out of all the Mirror Forces, you could honestly play Storming or regular Mirror Force, but uh, Storming was the one I chose just because it came in the uh, Cyber deck. Uh, I see, I see Cyber, uh, Cyber Dragon version of the deck. So going into extra, this is a real small extra deck, which is why we have our seven cards for cherry targets, okay? So you can honestly run more, but this is the way I play the extra deck. So you play one of the new fusion, um, you know, as, as I explained, you summon Ovi to Maius really easy, and then he protects all your back row, so it's really useful. Um, one Dark Paladin, if you feel, if you know you're facing a deck that uses a lot of spell cards, something in the first turn would be a bad choice. Um, decode, you're, you're never going to go into this. Uh, I don't see why this is useful, but it's just here. Uh, your rank 7s, uh, Ebon Illusion, um, amazing banishing effect, and does special summon Dark Illusion from the deck if you don't have uh, one already. And number 11 Big Eye actually does work real well against Pendulum Magician in in, in some instances, because if you steal their Time Star Magician while well, it still has the XC material, um, you can just detach one uh, material from that Time Star and then search a dark spellcaster monster for yourself. And lastly, we have Azure Eyes, which is why we're playing, again, I reference this card a lot of times, it's just why we're playing the Knight and Sorcerer. Um, Azure Eyes, um, when it's summoned, it like protects itself for the turn. And then every turn you get to special summon normal monsters from your graveyard. So it's just a real good engine if uh, you know you've run out of like eternal soul or something and uh, you just need something else to help you um, you know keep on bringing out your dark magician. So again, these are your seven cherry targets. Uh, you know, obviously these would all change depending on what you feel the meta is at your local tournament, but you know. Yeah. We have uh, three Ghost Reaper, one to Cherries. Uh, as I said before, you can play these in the main deck, but for, uh, you know, uh, it never hurts to have them in the side deck. Uh, the other two Ash Blossoms, if you know you're facing a deck that searches a lot, um, Ash Blossom definitely doesn't hurt. Uh, the Secret Village and Spellcasters, uh, honestly, uh, only one came in the box, so you, you could play three of these. Uh, but it doesn't work against Pendulum Magicians because they also are spellcasters as well. So, um, you know, they would also be able to activate um, spell cards. But for every other deck that isn't a spellcaster deck, um, you know, you could pretty much lock them out of playing the game because spell cards are such a crucial part. So, um, you know, having three days in the side deck uh, just for those matchups isn't a bad idea. And lastly, for Pendulum Magicians, uh, Unending Nightmare, because, you know, getting rid of the... Uh, 
Pendulum Graph track card is real important for uh, stopping uh, Pendulum Magicians. Also, um, popping stuff like Wisdom Eye before they can get its effect off can also hurt, um, hurt their plays a lot, and even um, the Star Pendulum Graph to stop them from searching. So, uh, that's how I'm playing Dark Magician for now. Um, again, uh, this is like day one, straight out of the box. Um, you know, obviously you can change uh, the deck for however way you want to play it, but um, there's a way I'm doing it. Hope you guys enjoyed. This was Nisha here. See you guys next time.